Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Tonight's story is again based on one of those true but utterly unexplainable happenings which occur time and again from country to country and from age to age. George Bosworth was a modern man of his time in every sense of the word and had his story occurred to another he very probably would have been the last man in the world to believe a word of it. Hart Bosworth had had a busy day, and now as the last customer left his shop, he prepared to close for the night. same moment, 150 miles at sea, George Bosworth prepared to retire, completely unaware of the incredible events which were about to occur. What is it, Mr. Boswell? Captain, I've got to get back to England immediately. I'm afraid that's quite impossible, sir. Oh, please. I'm afraid something's happened. Are you ill, Mr. Boswell? No, no. Well, yes, maybe. I, I don't know. I can't explain, Captain, but I must return at once. Mr. Bosworth, we're 150 miles from Dover, and I have a schedule to maintain. If I were to turn round and go back without good and sufficient reason, I would in all probability lose my position. But this is an emergency. There are rules and regulations covering all emergencies at sea. Perhaps if you could tell me why... But, but I, I think my, my brother is... I can't tell you, Captain. But it's terribly important. I'm sorry, Mr. Bosworth, but I can let you off at a stand. There you can make connections with another ship and be back in England by tomorrow morning. What time will we dock? We should be there within the hour. I pray God, Captain, we're not too late. Bullet wound through the arc, fired at close range. Man's been shot. He's dead right enough. From the looks of things, nothing has been taken except money. Cash draws empty. Which leads me to deduce that the motive for the crime was robbery. Got that, Orton? Yes, sir. I checked the Bosworth house. George isn't there. The place is shut up tight. That's odd. Him and Art usually close the shop together. Are you sure you heard the shots at 9.45? Right you are, Chester. 9.45 exactly. Just a minute, Bertha. A little less familiarity, if you please. This here is official police business, and I'm here in my official capacity. Until I've solved this crime, I'll trouble you to remember that I'm a sergeant in Her Majesty's Constabulary. Oh, I am sorry. From now on, I'll remember, Chester. Sergeant. You may proceed, Mrs. Clink. Well, I just put the kettle on. I always mix us a pot of tea in the evenings, just before retiring, as you might say. You know how Alfie likes to get to bed early. Yes, yes, yes. Get on with it. Well... I'd no sooner touched the kettle to the stove when I heard the shots. So I said to Alfie, that sounds like shots. And Alfie said, no. So I said to Alfie, Alfie, them was shots. 
and Alfie said... Never mind what Alfie said. What did you do? Well, the only light that was on was in Aunt Bosworth's shop. So I run down here to see if he'd heard them too. Imagine me horror and surprise to find poor Mr. Bosworth lying there in a pool of blood. Aha! And whose blood would you say it was? Uh, <coughs> how long would you estimate this was after you first heard the shots, Mrs. Clink? Couldn't have been more than five or ten minutes. Thank you very much, Mrs. Clink. That'll be all. But I haven't finished. If you've anything more to say, you can make a statement at the police station. But I know who done the murder. Mrs. Clink, you saw the murderer? Yes, I did. <coughs> I see. Now, just a minute, Constable, I'll handle this. Now then, Bertha, why didn't you give us this valuable information before this? I was about to, until I was so rudely interrupted. Are you insinuating that I was rude? Sergeant, I... Uh, may I suggest, uh, the murderer? Huh? The murderer? Oh, oh, yes, yes. All right, Mrs. Click, the name, if you please. His name is Albert Ketch. How do you know that, Mrs. Clink? I saw him. Just as I got outside, I saw him run from this very shop as though the old devil himself was after him. Are you sure? My sight's as good as yours, Chester Wilmore. Uh, uh, Sergeant, uh, shall I round him up? Why, yes, Constable, do that. And see if you can find out what become of George Bosworth. Uh, why not ask Mrs. Clink, sir? I'm sure I don't know, Constable. But why not ask Miss Julie Westcott? She's his fiance. She ought to know. I'll do that, Mrs. Kling. All right, now. Off with you. Oh, all of you, if you please. This here shop will be closed till further notice. Move along, please. Now then, Albert, why don't you confess and save us all a lot of trouble? All nice and tidy, eh? Because I didn't shoot Art Bosworth, that's why. Aha. Uh -huh. How do you know he was shot? You told me. Oh. What were you doing in the apothecary shop at that time? Well, I was there to collect a debt what was owed me. What was the debt for? Well, you see, I do a bit of carpenter work in my spare time, being at him with my tools, as you might say. And I, I built a set of shelves for Mr. Bosworth here several weeks ago. And it took you several weeks to get paid? Well, uh, well, there was a slight misunderstanding between us, as you might call it. Aha! Uh -huh. well, that don't mean I killed him. What was the cause of this uh, misunderstanding? While I was building the shelves, a case of his medicines got broke. Bosworth got terribly excited. Claimed I'd done it careless lot. Said they was worth more than the shelves and, and he wouldn't pay me. And so you killed him? That's not true. I don't even own a gun. A likely story. Why, I wouldn't be surprised if you wasn't doing a bit of poaching in your spare time. Oh, it's a nasty thing to say. Poaching's a very serious offence. I've a mind to enter charges against you. Sergeant, this man's being charged with murder, not with poaching. You hear that, Albert? The constable's right. Murder's the charge. Don't you try to throw us off the track with all this talk about poaching. Now, why don't you be a good fellow and confess and save us all this trouble? Now, look here, Sergeant. I'd like to help you, really, I would. But do you know I'm not the kind of man who'd kill a chap in cold blood? Albert Ketch, you're making it very hard for us. Very well. If you won't cooperate, we'll have to drag it out of you. We'll start all over again. George, darling. What's happened? Come inside. Something's happened to Hart, hasn't it? Sit down. No, no, tell me. Yes, George, Hart is... Hart's dead. Too late. I'm too late. George, you were on your way to France. How did you get back so quickly? I had a... feeling something was wrong. Who? Who shot him? Who told you he was shot? Uh, do they know who did it? Well, the police have arrested Albert Ketch. Albert Ketch? But he didn't do it. Darling, I know this has been a terrible shock, but you weren't here. How do you know he didn't do it? Julie, please, take me on trust for now. Albert Ketch had nothing to do with Hart's death. Darling, you're upset. 
Why don't you lie down for a little while? I'll bring you some tea. No, 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 please. I've got to convince the police that they're making a mistake. They've no reason to hold Albert. Darling, you asked me to trust you. I do. You know that. Can't you even tell me how you can be so certain? Julie, have I ever shown any signs of insanity? Of course not. Well, I haven't told you yet how I came back so quickly or why. I never even got to France. Because on the boat I had a... a vision. Of what? The whole thing. The whole thing? Yes. I saw the murder being committed. George, tell me exactly what you thought you saw. Well, I was washing, getting ready for bed, and... when I looked into the basin, I saw the apothecary shop. It was exactly as if I was right there, everything as clear as it is now. You must have been dreaming. No, I saw Hart by the shelves. And then I saw the murderer come in and shoot him. You saw the murderer? Who was it? I don't know. But it wasn't Albert Ketch, I'm sure of that. George, you can't tell anybody this. But I must. Ketch is innocent. Julie? You believe me, don't you? Well, what difference does it make whether I... A great I... deal of difference to me. George, I believe you because I love you. But if you tell this story to the police... No, that's a chance I must take. That's a chance you must not take. But they'll hang Ketch. Listen to me, George. There's nothing you can do. If Ketch is innocent, he has nothing to fear. But you, if you tell this fantastic tale to the police, you'll be ruined. Julia, a man's life is in danger. How can I think of myself? Well, then think of me. You know they won't believe you. At best, they'll call you insane. And how will I feel? Hearing people talk behind your back, pretending I don't hear them whispering? Julie, think this is not... Think of Hart. You know how he worked to build up the shop? Will you let all his work go for nothing? Well, that's what'll happen. Do you think people will do business with a man who... who sees things? I'm sorry, Julie. Whatever anybody thinks, I've got to try. Very well, George. If you feel you must, I'll go with you. No, no, no. There's no need for you to become involved. back there, sir. Oh. Well, in that case, we'll have to continue our search in here. Ah, oh, Mr. Bosworth, sir. Allow me to offer my condolences in this horrible tragedy. Thank you, Sergeant. They told me at the police station I'd find you here. <laughs> May I ask what you're looking for? Clues, Mr. Bosworth, clues. And have you found any? Almost. But don't you worry, sir. We have the fiend what done this foul deed. If you mean Albert Ketch, Sergeant, he didn't do it. Why do you say that, sir? Well, I ask you again. What makes you so sure that Albert Ketch is innocent? I can't tell you, Sergeant. You'll just have to take my word for it, but... Albert Ketch had nothing to do with it. Well, that's rather a large order, Mr. Bosworth. Asking us to accept your word without anything to back it up. Mr. Bosworth, sir. I assume you can prove your whereabouts at the time of the crime? Well, yes, I can. I was on a boat on my way to France. Mr. Bosworth, who else besides yourself stands to inherit your brother's estate after his death? Why, no one. I'm the only... Just what are you driving at? Now, I'm sure the constable means no offence, sir. But let me fill you in on the facts. 
We have a high witness what places Albert Ketch at the scene of the crime. He had motive, he had opportunity. Sergeant, have a look here. Looks like an owl. It's a bullet hole, I think. Have I your permission to... Help yourself, Constable. It's rather a small caliber. As you say, very small. I'm sure it comes from a Derringer. A Derringer? Well, wouldn't that prove that Albert Ketch had nothing to do with it? Why do you say that? Well, what would Ketch be doing with a little gun like that? Mr. Bosworth's right, sir. It's hard to accept the fact that Albert Ketch would be in possession of a Derringer. Unless it was deliberately given to him by somebody. Now look here, Constable. So you refuse still to tell us why you think Albert Ketch is innocent? I can't tell you, Sergeant. I'll submit a possibility to you, Mr. Bosworth. I'll submit it's uh, possible you needed money badly enough to want your brother out of the way. I submit that your insistence on Albert Ketch's innocence may very well be more than just a desire to see justice done. And what do you have to say to that, Mr. Bosworth? Nothing. Am I under arrest? Not as yet, but I shall have to ask you to remain within call. Evening, Mr. Bosworth. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Clink. Alfie and me wishes to convey our sympathy for your bereavement. Thank you. Shall we sit down for a minute? Oh, yes, Doc. <laughs> Thank you. He was a fine man, your brother. A fine man. Always willing to extend credit until Pi die. And never too proud to step in and have a lift with us. And his scales was honest, too. Yes, it was a terrible shock to me, Mrs. Clink. I can well imagine, but never you fear. Albert Ketch shall get what he deserves. Why is everyone so certain that Ketch is guilty? Oh, bless you. Who else could it be? I saw him myself. You saw him? Of course I did. Has nobody told you? That Chester Wilmore. I am the most important witness. Are there any other witnesses? Not a one and no more are needed, I can tell you that. Of course, Miss Westcott might have seen the old thing. Had she been there five minutes earlier? Julie, what's, what's she got to do with it? Of course, she might have been killed if she had. Yeah, but tell me, how does Julie fit into all this? Well, I'd uh, just stepped out of my house for a breath of air before putting the tea on for Alfie and me when I sees Miss Westcott going into the apothecary shop. And it was hardly five minutes later when I heard two shots. I runs outside, and there goes Albert Ketch a tearing down the street. Naturally, I got the police. And it was hardly no time at all before they had him clapped in the pokey. Julie never said anything about it. Oh, I dare say she didn't want to worry you. So it's the first time I've ever known her to worry about anyone. What do you mean by that? I'm not the one to talk about a body when they're not present to defend theirself. But everyone knows as our Miss Julie Westcott considers herself much better than us common folk. What are you saying, Mrs. Clink? Truth, ask any of the girls, they'll tell you. Her and her fine talk about position and money and station in life. But she wasn't fooling your brother none. No, sir. She wasn't pulling the wool over his eyes. Oh, you Poor boy, I've upset you with my wagging tongue. Alfie always says I talk too much. But don't pay any attention to me. <sighs> you better get home and get some rest. And I'll be saying good night. Darling, I've been frantic. Where have you been? I've been walking. The police think I'm involved in Hart's death. Oh, 
George, are they mad? How can they think you had anything to do with it? They have the murderer. No, they haven't. Ketch is no more guilty than I am. Will you stop saying that? The police think he's guilty, isn't that enough? No. Why are you so intent on seeing him hang? I'm not. I... I just don't like seeing you so upset, that's all. Julie? Was there ever any... trouble between you and Hart? Of course not. You know how fond of him I was. Except... Well, he thought I was too ambitious, didn't he? <laughs> well, Hart was an old-fashioned man. He thought a woman's place was in the home. George, you know I only want what's best for you, don't you? Yes, of course. A woman needs security, a home, children, a husband she can be proud of. I know, you've been very patient. Well, not really, George. There were times during the last five years when I wanted to scream, when I wanted to say to Hart, why won't you pay George enough money so we can be married? He's earned it, he deserves it. But that's all over now. We can be married right away, can't we, George? Well, once a decent interval has gone by... Oh, darling, we'll be so happy. Mrs. George Bosworth. I can't wait to see my friends' faces when I tell them. They didn't think it would happen, you know, really. They didn't think I knew they were snickering behind my back. As if I couldn't tell what they were thinking. That Julie Westcott, she isn't getting any younger. If George doesn't ask her soon, she may not get any more chances. Aren't you exaggerating just a little? Well, perhaps just a little. Now, promise me you'll think only happy thoughts while I make us some tea. Julie? Yes, dear. About Albert Ketch. I've been thinking, perhaps you're right. There really is nothing more I can do. I'll see that he gets a good solicitor, of course. That's very generous of you, George. And as soon as I can, I'll put the shop up for sale. And then we'll be married and we'll move to somewhere What's the matter? What did you say? We'll be married as soon as I can sell the shop. You can't sell it. Why not? Oh, I know how you feel, but I can't stay here where everything reminds me of heart. You don't know how I feel. Julie, what's the matter with you? Weren't you listening to me? We live here. Our friends are here. You're an important member of the community, and I'll be your wife, George. They'll respect us. As long as we're together, what does it matter where we live? I won't have it. The shop is doing well here. We have money and position. Do you think I want to start again at the bottom? Not knowing anybody, not being anybody? I forbid it. Julie, you're losing your perspective. I welcome your help, but I must make my own decisions. Welcome my help? Well, that's funny, George. Without me, there'd be no decision for you to make. What are you saying? You've had five years to make a decision, but your precious brother stood in the way. Well, I made it for you. He's gone, and I won't let you throw away everything I've worked for. George, listen. I did it for you, for both of us. How could you? Julie! I wanted you. I needed you. Heart stood between us, and I couldn't bear it any longer. But it's all over now, George. He's gone. There's just the two of us. And we'll be happy, George. You'll see. George, don't leave me. Please. I'm going to find Sergeant Wilmore. George! George! So, George, shocked and stunned as few men have had the misfortune to be, did his duty as he saw it. Bereft of brother, fiancé, he still had a life before him. Time would heal these scars, but 
but would it ever bring to him an understanding of how he could have seen his brother's death? I don't know. Do you? Please join me again for another journey into the world of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Good night.